more and more schools reopening, consider this. According to a recent report, one out of every four teachers has a health condition that could put them at serious risk for COVID-19. Tonight, a woman who once served as Tennessee's top school nurse warns the state is failing those teachers. She spoke to News Channel 5 investigative chief investigative reporter Phil Williams. Phil. Well, guys, Christy Butler told me she decided to speak up after watching the governor repeatedly ignore guidance from health authorities that would protect teachers. It turns out hers is a voice of experience. We're asking teachers to go way beyond their scope of education um, in dealing with this pandemic, and I feel like the state has you know, abandon them in this situation. For two and a half years, Christy Butler was Tennessee's school nurse consultant, the person school nurses from across the state would call for advice. I don't want anybody to die from this virus. I don't want anybody else to get this virus. It's horrible. It's the worst thing ever. These days, the registered nurse is battling COVID-19 herself, sometimes still fighting to breathe nine weeks after she first contracted the virus. Anytime I stand up, from like going from one room to the other, my heart rate will, I mean, it goes up to like 130, 140s, and it takes about 10 minutes before it'll actually calm back down once I sit down. But the school nurses and teachers still call. Yeah, they're, they're scared. Teachers are coming in earlier. They're staying later, sometimes till nine and 10 o'clock at night. They're crying, you know, uncontrollably. It's not a perspective the governor shares. The vast majority of teachers in our state are uh, looking forward to being in their classrooms. Governor Bill Lee has repeatedly claimed he's following the guidance of federal health authorities in pushing schools to reopen with in-person learning, while he ignores recommendations that communities must first reduce the rate of transmission of the virus in order to do it safely. And you've heard the governor say research shows the best place for a child is in the classroom. Sure, and, and I agree. The best place for the child to learn is in the classroom. However, it needs to be done safely. If it can't be done safely, then it doesn't need to be done. Lives are, are at stake. This map from the state's own website shows all but four counties still have what Lee's team considers to be unacceptable rates of transmission. Most of the school districts there are reopening anyway. Those kids leave the schools. They they go out into the community where all those numbers are, they're going to be bringing it right back into the school. You have to get those community numbers under control before they're, before they're back in school. Then you make that classroom as safe as possible by providing PPE for teachers. The governor has also claimed he's protecting teachers by distributing personal protective equipment. His idea of PPE mask made out of sock material, which are designed to keep the person wearing the mask from spreading the virus themselves. That piece of personal protective equipment is a part of what we're providing. The CDC says masks are not personal protective equipment. So when you say you're giving teachers PPE, that's not true. As you know, the CDC actually has applauded our efforts. But we checked the CDC website, which makes it clear face masks are not appropriate substitutes for PPE. The CDC does recommend that students be required to wear face masks to keep them from infecting other students and teachers. But Lee insists on letting other people decide whether to follow those guidelines. We've given guidance for sixth grade and up. Uh, for masks in schools, but for those kindergartners through sixth grade, we want parents to have the choice as to what their children do in those schools, and that's the guidance and suggestions we've given to schools. So it's okay in your mind for parents to put teachers at risk by not requiring their children? I think it's okay in my mind to let parents make the decisions about whether their five-year-old should wear a mask to school. What, what about a senior or a freshman or well, we've given guidance that we believe school districts should have masks for sixth grade and up. But you don't require it, sir. That's right. I think we've, I've been real clear about, uh, about requirements and mandates versus the implementation of local leadership. You have to follow the CDC guidelines, not picking and choosing which of those guidelines that you want. Butler worries that the state does not have a plan for what happens if lots of teachers start getting sick, especially with substitute teachers being hard to come by. Filling a classroom full of 25 and 30 students at a time 
you're just asking for you're just asking for a jump in numbers. What is your biggest fear? My biggest fear is we're going to have teachers and we're going to have students who can't fight this virus or who end up disabled because of this. Now consider this, Lee's own health department routinely puts out this tweet emphasizing that my face covering protects you, your face covering protects me. There is zero evidence that the governor's sock mask will keep teachers from getting COVID-19 from children whose faces are not covered. Rory. All right, Phil, thank you. And the chair of Tennessee's Democratic Party, Mary Mancini, is reacting to the governor's decision to reverse course on telling parents which schools have outbreaks. She says, in part, quote, we are in the process, or we are in the middle of a deadly public health crisis and parents, students, teachers, and school staff have a right to know if their peers are carriers or testing positive to the deadly virus, end quote. Meanwhile,